would you like to do this man to man? No guns. Yeah. Been around here for a long time, and I've heard some pretty tall tales where this one purely stops the clock. I'm telling you the truth, Sheriff. That's exactly the way it happened. Well, the judge will be here in a few days. You can try your story on him. Sheriff? What do you want, Quinn? Well, I uh, heard what happened to Leggett, so I thought I just better step up and tell you what I know. Like what? Well, it was bad blood between this one and Leggett. They had a big fight out near my corrals the day they started the drive for Sacramento. Oh, I heard about that fight and four or five more. Did you hear he said he was going to kill Leggett? Did you say that, boy? Yeah, yeah, I probably did. About the time he was knocking me down or I was knocking him down. We were a little bit riled up, Sheriff. All right, you said your piece, Quinn, so, uh... Why don't you go on back to buying cattle leave the law work to me, all right? I'm just doing my duty, Sheriff. Thanks a lot, conscientious citizen. Sheriff? Yeah? Can I send a telegram? To who? Ben Cartwright in Sacramento. Yeah, I reckon you can if you can write it out and pay you for it. Thanks a lot. Would Leggett pull a knife on you? The Leggett and I were always fighting, you know that. Well, I know that, but fighting is one thing and murder is something else entirely. Yeah, I know. Well, why did he use the gun? Why did he throw away the gun? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to make the noise. That horse thief. Was he the only Indian around? He's the only one I saw. I know he's the only man who can prove I didn't kill Leggett. What did he look like? About my height, my weight. Uh. Long black hair, wore a blue shirt, sleeves were cut off, and a uh, beaded belt. How do you find a horse thief? I don't know. Easy to find a needle in a haystack. All we can do is start looking where Candy saw him last. Yeah, even if we find him, can he take his work? Hey, pa, I got an idea. Yeah. I'll need some money. How much? $200. 
Your ideas are bold, but very expensive, Joseph. For candy's sake and yours, I, I hope this is a good one. Fifty. Hundred. Twenty. Forty. Sixty. Eighty. Two hundred, right. Right. I've sold you Cartwrights a lot of horses, but I've never sold you one as good as this. Never for that kind of price either, Jack. Two hundred dollars for that horse is highway robbery, and you know it. <laughs> you Cartwrights can afford it. I'll see you later. Thanks, Jack. Little brother, quit playing games with me. What do you want with this horse, anyhow? I'm gonna use him for bait, Hoss. Bait? Bait. I've already gone over the facts of the case with the sheriff. You have? I realize Mr. Canaday would need a good lawyer, in which case he'd come to me. It saves time if I'm conversant with facts. They have a good case, circumstantial but strong. It could go either way. Do you think you can help them? I'll try. The fee is $500 in advance. You don't think the man's life is worth $500? Well, yes, I guess I do, of course, but... You're paying me to tip the scales of justice in your favor. Justice is not inexpensive. Squirrels turn around up there. No. Dat burn bugs, chiggers and skeers, and I got everything but mice. Ah, well, don't tell me your troubles. You know, if we can get a pout to come up and steal that that apple, who's ten to one, it won't be the right pout. Uh, we'll just turn them loose and wait for the right one. That's all. Yeah, but will the right pout come along before they hang Andy or after? Charlie boy. Charlie. Charlie boy. Yeah. Charlie boy. Come on, up you go. And a boy. You Charlie boy. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Now, you used to work for John Leggett, didn't you? Not anymore, I don't. He's dead. Well, <laughs> I know. Uh, Charlie boy? I was wondering if you knew of anybody who might have a reason to kill old Leggett. Me. Leggett don't pay me my wages. But I didn't kill him. Besides, I scared of Leggett. It's funny. Leggett was scared too. Mean as a scorpion. But he was scared. He owed somebody a lot of money. Drinking together one night. He told me if he don't pay up, he's gonna get killed. Who do you owe the money to? I don't know. That's when I fell asleep. Well, no sign of anybody. Two days we haven't even seen an Indian. Yeah, we can't get lucky like Custer. It was a good idea, Joe. It just didn't work. We'll get back into Reno first thing in the morning for the trial. All right.
drop that knife. Drop it. I've lost two nights sleep trying to catch you. And ain't nothing makes me madder than losing all that sleep. Joe? Wake up, Joe. I think we got him. At least we got a fella that fits the description. Blue shirt, beaded bell. Fits the description, all right. What's your name? Oh, it's how's your play? Well, I can say we come as friends. Yeah, I got a feeling he's not gonna believe that. Look, we need your help. How do you say we need your help? Come so too poor. What do you say? That's how you say we need your help. He speaks English. I also speak Paiute, which makes me smarter than you. Well, if you're so smart, how'd you let us catch you? All right, horse. Look, we've been looking for you. Is that why you have been leaving that horse staked out? Yeah. How did you expect to find me while you were hiding under trees? Well, we found you. That's the important thing, ain't it? About a week ago, you tried to grab two horses. Uh, a friend of ours caught up with you, a fellow named Candy. You had a fight. You remember that? Why? Because during that fight, there was a shot. That shot killed a man. And that friend of ours is being held for murder. I remember. It happened as you say. All right, will you come with us to Reno and testify to that? No. I told you, you go to Reno and tell them. We can't do that. You're the witness, you have to testify. All right. Bring them here, I will tell them. We can't bring the court here, you're gonna have to go there. If you don't, he'll hang. If I do go, they will hang me. No, they won't. Now look, we guarantee it. We'll get you into town and out again. No. Well, they probably wouldn't take the word of a horse thief anyhow. I am a chief. You're a horse thief. I am a great horse thief. Brave men steal the horses of their enemies. When you steal a man's horse, you steal his pride. It gives you honor. Where I come from, get you hung. Look, we can take you whether you want to go or not. Even if they will not believe a horse thief? Now they might believe a chief. Ah, oh, Joe, he ain't no chief. Chief wouldn't let himself get caught this easy. You did not catch me. I caught you. I told him to cut your heart out, he would do it. If I told him to strip the flesh off your back inch by inch, he would do it. Do you know why? Because I am a chief. You're not a chief, you're a coward. Shall I show you? Oh, how, by having him kill me? The Cheyenne let their women kill prisoners. Are you trying to prove you're as brave as a Cheyenne squaw? No, a chief is a man who looks for justice. He couldn't let an innocent man die. It'll be just one less white man for me to kill. It takes no courage to have someone else do your killing. You're a coward. You're afraid of the white man. Yawai <laughs> Mohe. Oh, 
I will go with you to Reno. But before this is over, you will eat your words. Because I will feed them to you on the point of this knife, one by one. talk about me like I'm some kind of horse. He speaks English. Why don't you tell me? Uh, who is he? Oh, it's my father. What is his name? Ben Carter. Can he speak Paiute? Oh, I, think I can, can speak for myself. I can too. So if you have any more questions, ask me. Um, sorry. Why not talking here to, uh, uh... Jokova. <clears throat> well, I, uh, go over to Mr. Scott. He's the lawyer I hired and tell him I want a movie. I want to hear what Jokova has to say. Well, I'm, can we get something to eat first while I'm starving? Yeah, I'm kind of hungry myself. Is it Joe? Yeah, I could use a steak. Uh, Jokova? Mm. Yeah. What would you like to eat? You just name it and we'll be happy to get it for you. Buffalo hump. Oh, I, I, I don't think that they'd have buffalo hump in the restaurant. Then I'll have boiled dog. You don't uh, eat what everybody else eats, huh? How about steak? That's cow. Yeah, but, uh, it, it is a cow. It, it, you know, they might have some venison. Well, as a matter of fact, they do. I saw it on the menu. They have that venison. Venison. Fine. How do you want it fixed? Or an open fire made with dried buffalo chips. Oh, well, sure. Yes, that. Yeah, Hoss, uh, stop by at the jail on the way and uh, tell Canada the good news. Yeah. Well, uh... Yeah, I think uh, this would be a good room for you to be in. That way nobody can get in here without coming through here first. See? That way nobody will get to see you. I'll uh, call you as soon as the food gets up. Oh, brother. What's the matter? Well, do you know what that is? Hmm? The most wanted Indian in the territory. What? Well, there isn't a lawman around that doesn't want to get his hands on him. Oh, well, that's great. What do we do now? Try to figure out some way of keeping our only witness from being hanged. I was wondering, where'd you learn to speak English? From Pony Soldier. When I was small, I lived outside of the Fort Gates. Is that where you learned to hate the white man? You think because I steal their horses, I hate the white man? When you kill him. I have never killed one white man. Everybody thinks you have. Yes, and this is good. If they think I am a killer, they do not chase me when I steal their horses. Who's that? It's me, Paul. Fine, Walter Sloan. Good evening, Mr. Cartwright. 
you picked your most inconvenient time for consultation. Well, I didn't think this could wait. Trial is tomorrow. It hasn't slipped my mind, if that's what's worrying you. I would like to get back to my poker game. A man is on trial for his life, and that trial starts tomorrow morning. And I'm defending him. That is a terrible responsibility, Mr. Cartwright. I'm fully aware that I hold another man's life in my hands. In court tomorrow, I will do my very best. Well, Mr. Scott, I'm sure that you will do your very best. And, uh, as a matter of fact, to ensure that, we have a witness for you. A, an eyewitness, a man who was with Candy when that shot was fired. Then he really is innocent. What do you think? It doesn't matter what I think. Innocence or guilt, it's for the jury to decide. All right. Let's see the witness. You're joking. He was with Candy when Leggett was killed. He is Jokerver, isn't he? Yes. I'm sorry you went to all that trouble. We can't possibly use him. His appearance in court would prejudice the entire case. How? He's an Indian and a wanted man. You mean you, you're not going to use the only witness we have who can corroborate Candy's story? No. It would only confuse the court. They wouldn't know whether to hang the defendant or hang the witness. They might end up by hanging them both side by side. You're not going to use them? No. Well, then, I'm afraid we're going to have to get ourselves another lawyer. If you can find one. I'll see you at the trial anyway. I wouldn't miss this for the biggest poker game in Denver. I think it was the best lawyer in town. Well, I say good riddance. Let's get the second best. Well, he's also the second best and third and worst. He's the only lawyer in Reno. I guess that leaves it up to us and, and Jokova. Jokova, just tell me exactly what happened out there so I'll know what to say in court. Two white men were fighting while I stole their horses. Oh, I, I don't think you'd better say anything about stealing horses in court. It is the truth. Yes, I know it. No, you tell it just the way it happened. <sighs> Who's there? Sheriff Crawler. Hard to bother, Mr. Cartwright, but uh, somebody said they seen your two boys here sneaking the engine up the back way. Oh? Huh? Said it looked a whole lot like Joker. Well, I wonder who'd say a thing like that. I don't know, but as long as I'm here, I might as well take a look around. What's in there? <laughs> What's going on here? There's something in there, Mr. Cartwright, you don't want me to see? Of course not. Well, you, you won't mind if I take a look for myself, then, will you? Hey, CJ, you still down there? Right where you left me. Ain't nobody come out of your window? Uh, nothing's moved since you went up them stairs.
I'm sorry to bother Miss Godrain. Is that right, Sheriff? before it's time for you to appear in court. And when it is time, I'll have the boys come and get you. All right? You need me. Thanks. Who's the judge? Judge Butler. He's the hanging judge. Thanks. One of my lucky days. Take your hats off. Stand up. Sit down. Mr. Prosecutor, what have you got? Hello, Ben. Morning, Your Honor. What are you doing here? Well, I'm uh, acting as counsel for the defense of Mr. Kennedy. Come here a minute. You're no lawyer, Ben. I know. What makes you think you can handle the defense of a man who's on trial for his life? Somebody's got to do it. Oh. Can't get a lawyer to take the case, huh? All right. There's something you ought to know that's very important. If murder's proved, it's a hanging offense. I know that. Now, let's get on with it. Hiram, uh, Mr. Prosecutor, call your witnesses. I call Joe Cartwright. your hand on the Bible. You swear to tell the truth? Yeah. Sit down. Mr. Cartwright, did you ever see the uh, defendant and the murdered man in a fight? Yeah, I guess I did. How often? Uh, two or three times, I guess. Maybe four? Yeah, maybe. Enough to know they really hated each other, right? I'm waiting for your answer, Mr. Cartwright. Candy didn't kill him. What were they usually fighting about? Oh, anything and everything. It didn't take much of a reason and never was very serious. Do you think either of them took the threat seriously? Well, Leggett said that Candy was a hard case and meant to kill him.
Now, in your opinion, why would the murderer bring the body of his victim back to town? Hmm. Throw suspicion off himself and maybe onto the Indians? But could it have been the Indians? Well, he still had his scalp. I don't think it was the Indians. Your witness, Mr. Conrad? No questions. That's all, Sheriff. Thank you. That's my case, Judge. Ben? Right, boys, go get Joker. Don't bring him in. Don't let anybody see him until I call for him. I have to tell you. He's got a pretty good case. You sure you can handle the defense? Well, sir, that depends on you and Hiram. I personally guarantee the safety if he'd come in here and testify. Well, I'd kind of like to hear what this Joker has to say. Hiram? I don't know, Judge. What is it you don't know, Hiram? Well, in the first place, he's a savage. Yes, oh. His swearing on the Bible wouldn't mean a thing. Oh, come on. You don't have to believe in the Bible to be able to tell the truth. But there's more to it than that. Get off your high horse, Hiram. Let's hear what this man has got to say. It's your courtroom. You can go. Now, Ben Cartwright is about to call a witness. You may not like this witness, but he's here to see justice done. And if anyone so much as lays a hand on him, he's going to have me to deal with and the devil to pay. Ben, call your witness. Well, Your Honor, uh, my, my, my boys have just gone out to, uh, to get them, and I'm sure they'll be here in, in just a moment. You've got 30 seconds. Delaying things, Cartwright. Your Honor, uh, I would like to ask for a temporary recess and uh, until we until we can find our witness. I am here, Mr. Cartwright. Please tell the court your name. Jokova. And you are a member of the Paiute Nation? I am a chief. Now, chief Jokova, do you know what this trial is about? Yes. Now, would you please tell the court where you were and what you were doing the day Leggett was killed? I was hiding in the woods. I saw two men coming. One was the man who was killed. The other was this one. They left their horses and they climbed to a high point to look around. The one who was killed 
attack this one with a knife. While they were fighting, I ran out to steal their horses. Shut up! <clears throat> I see. And then? I was riding away with their horses when this one jumped from uh, a bank and knocked me from the saddle. While we were fighting, there was a shot. I thought more white men were coming, so I rode away and hid. I saw this one run back to the other man. The other man was already dead. Thank you, Chief Joker. Your witness. Why did you hide when you saw the two riders approaching? Because I was going to steal their horses and their guns. Shut up! Did you intend to kill him? Only if I had to. Judge, you can't take the word of a man like this. He just confessed to being a horse thief and a would-be murderer. Why, you don't believe all the things he said about himself, do you? I certainly do. Well, if they're true, the rest is true. And Mr. Canada is innocent. Sit down, Hiram. Was Leggett killed by an Indian? No. If it had been one of my Indians, he would have bragged about it. Did you see anything else? This. It was in the grass where the two white men were fighting. Why didn't you mention this before? Nobody asked me. Mr. Kennedy? You own a gold toothpick? <laughs> Me? I never owned a gold toothpick. I don't think I've ever seen but two or three before. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Joe. Joe. Who was it? Quinn! Yeah, it's Quinn. Mr. Quinn, if you've got a gold toothpick, let's see it. I, uh... Well, I, uh, I guess I left it at home. Your Honor, I'd like to ask another question. Go right ahead. Jokova, is there something that you haven't told us because nobody's asked it of you? Yes. What is it? After this man rode out with body, I saw another white man come out from hiding behind trees. I followed him to Reno. It was this man. That's a lie. And he rode an unshod Indian pony. Lies. Every word. No, 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 they're not lies. An unshod pony to make the killing look like the work of the Paiutes. No! You and Liggett were working together. No. Of course they were. That's why Liggett wanted to bring the herd back to Reno. To sell the beef to you for $12 a head. Instead of the 18, we could get in Sacramento. Of course. That's what Charlie Boy was talking about. He said that Leggett owed somebody a lot of money. That he was afraid the fellow was going to kill him. It was you that killed him, wasn't it? No. I think you're lying. Put that man in jail, Crawley. Well, George, what about uh, Jokova? Well, if it hadn't been for Jokova, we might have hanged an innocent man. Now, the rest of you people, sit down. This court is still in session. You take that man over and lock him up, Crawley. Yes, sir. Mr. Quinn, you're going to need a good lawyer. I'll go with you. Now, 
Now, the rest of us are going to sit here for 30 minutes while I review this case. Ben, I don't think I'm going to need you or your witness anymore. Thank you, Your Honor. Gentlemen, let's go. Horses are ready, Paul. Oh, good. They're almost ready, too. Look at that. Hold it. Don't nobody move now. I don't want nobody to get hurt. All I want is out that Indian. Now, if you'll just put your guns on the bedspread there, real nice and neat like. Come on. All right, if you'll just fold it up in a nice little bun for me. Okay. The judge promised you a complete immunity. I don't care what the judge said. under the bed, Sheriff, where I was before. Come in. All of you. You called me a coward. Now you will eat your words. You're a brave man. And a chief. You're also a thief. A great thief. A big thief, anyway. You will go with me. As I told you, I have killed many white men. One more will make no difference. Do not follow me. Oh, no, no, no. He means it. He'll kill Joseph. Yeah, take the horse. He's yours. Go on. I told you he's yours. What are you waiting for? If I rode into my village on this horse now, my people would know you gave him to me. What's wrong with that? I do not accept gifts from my enemies. Or from your friends? You know something? You feel mighty good to get back to that ranch. For a while there, I thought maybe I wasn't going to make it. Joker. Joker. I didn't get a chance to thank you. Welcome. It is not easy to be friends with your enemy. Now, before I steal from a white man, I will have to look into his face to see that I am not stealing from a friend. Chief. You know, after you get to know him, he's a pretty decent sort of fellow, wasn't he? Yeah. Sure did a lot for me. Mm. Yeah. Well, in a way, I'm sorry I didn't take that horse. Yeah. Strange man. But in his own way, a very honest man. Son of a gun stole the horse?
Well, as I said, in his own way, a very honest man. <laughs> Sure could do with a bite. Offer it to the gentleman, Candy. Then you may help yourself. Thank you, ma'am. Work for the lady, huh? Yeah. Don't touch the chicken leg. How about you, mister? What's going on? Some sort of a robbery. Everybody out! Come on, get out of there! Come on! Leave that here, on the floor. Keep him up! Keep him up! Get over there! Over there! Get going! Okay, hurry up, folks. Come on! Got all day. Keep him up! Over there! Get those hands up! Throw down that strong box. The third's a lady. There's a bag has nothing of value. Those. Can't tell. Be satisfied with my money, Candy. Stop it. Stand right where you are. I am. Okay, let's move out. at all satisfied with your behavior. Yeah, sometimes I'm not too thrilled with it myself. When you're in my employ, I expect both courage and loyalty. Oh, getting myself killed comes higher than 75 cents a day. Recovering my jewels is going to be no end of trouble, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Nevertheless, it must be done. Hey, Pa! Candy's back. Mrs. Wharton. How do you do, Mr. Well, Cartwright? Mrs. Wharton, pleasure. He got robbed on the stagecoach not 15 miles from here. Oh, no. Cleaned us out. Oh, that's terrible news. <laughs> I, uh, I had the stage drop us off at the Vernons. Uh, we borrowed a rig. I ran into Joe and Hoss on the way in. I figured, uh, you could put Mrs. Wharton up here. Well, of course. Come oh. in. Sit down, Mrs. No, Wharton, please. Thanks, very Take kind us up at home. Mr. Cartwright, but, um, Candy practically dragged me here. I must get into Virginia City to notify the authorities. I keep telling you the stage driver will do that. Is there a British consul hereabouts? A British co No. An army unit. <laughs> really, now, you're much better off here than I. Just make yourself comfortable, and there's nothing you can do until daylight anyway. Joseph, Hoss, why don't you take Mrs. Wharton's bags up to the guest room? All right, Paul. This is your home, Candy. Yeah. You led me to believe you were a servant. Uh, no, ma'am, it was you that told me I was. Perhaps I did. Do you
you think I might have a cup of tea? Oh, yes, ma'am. We'll fix it right up. Oh, and do lace it with a tot of rum, won't you? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's, uh, that's quite a lady there. Where'd you meet her? Uh, that's a long story. Oh? First of all, I finished the job you sent me to do. Mm -hmm. Here's the contract, signed and sealed. Good. Now, about the lady. Hmm? Well, when I finished the job, I decided to take a look around San Francisco. I uh, met her on the Barbary Coast. Did you? Well, I can... Uh... I understand why you might have been there, but uh, what about her? Yeah, well, she was there to find the steamer office. Oh. So I took her over. She called me her good man, said that virtue should not go unrewarded, and offered me a job. Uh, my fare back to Virginia City in six bits a day to fetch and carry. Seemed like a good deal. Yeah, sure. Where's she going? Around the world. By herself? Believe me, Mr. Cartwright, she doesn't need anybody else. No, no, Mrs. Wharton. You paid my way, and uh, I was coming this way anyway. Four days, three dollars. That was our arrangement, although you are largely incompetent. Cows are more my line. I think Sheriff Coffey's back now. You want to go check, see if he has any news for you? Oh, excellent. <laughs> Very interesting village you have here, Kevin. English, isn't it? Ah. Oh. What is this? Uh, it's a branding iron. Ah, yes. To identify the livestock. Barbarous. Cruel. It's right up the street. Warden. Mrs. Warden. Oh, ladies, don't come in here. I shouldn't wonder. Quite picturesque, though. Don't gawk. Go about your business. Don't gawk. See your five and raise your ten. What are they playing? Draw a poker. What is the object of the game? Well, they're betting to see who has the highest cards. Knaves, queens, kings? That's right. Then why is he continuing to wager? Um, he was what you call uh, bluffing. It's one of the finer points. Could we go outside now? You girl. brooch belongs to me. It don't neither. You sure? Perfectly. What is your name? Laura May Mears. Mine's Candy. The initials on the back are E-C-H. Elizabeth Catherine Hewlett, my maiden name. You've had it no longer than last night. It was probably given you by a man. 
want it back. I don't know nothing about that. Now leave me alone. Miss Mears, I'll call the sheriff. It'll be your word against mine. Which one of you think you'll believe? I've no doubt you accepted the brooch in good faith. I'll give you ten dollars for it. I, I didn't mean no harm. I mean, I had no way of knowing it. And the name of the man who gave it to you. Well, now, I, I can't say as I know for sure. You got that from a stranger? No. I don't want no trouble. Just take it, and that's all. There is a penalty in this country for receiving stolen goods? Yep. We won't tell anybody where we heard it. It was last night, over in Milburg. Billy Buckman. Is that where he is now? No. He was talking about going back to Vallejo. My husband gave me this. Daniel. It was a Sunday afternoon. One of those dismal, dreary, rainy days. But he was so anxious to be alone with me, he dragged me out of doors and we ran into the summer house. I was 16. He was 18 and so shy. All he could say was, here, I want you to have this, and he shoved it into my hand. Sure, he had a much more flowery speech all planned. So sweet. He passed away four years ago. I'm oh, sorry. Then they have the locket Daniel gave me for our first anniversary. The ring my children gave me for my birthday. Their pictures miniature of little Jonathan. He died at seven. It's all I have of his. And there are other things. Each one means something, an occasion. The world's changed, and the Lord knows I have to. But these things haven't. And when I see them, each occasion is very close again. You're too young for the past to be important to you. Yes. That's what they stole from me. A hundred pounds would buy the lot, unless you're a sentimental old fool. Well, come along, Candy. Oh, Vallejo's about uh, half a day's ride from here. Sheriff Coffey said he couldn't go there. That's out of his jurisdiction, then. Eh? Well, who has jurisdiction? The United States Marshal, when he's there, which isn't very often, and when he isn't there, that's a wild and woolly place. Huh. Sounds fascinating. Um, Mr. Conway, hmm? I got an idea. Uh, you and, and, and Joe and Hoss have to be over at the Johnson place for that roundup, but you don't need me there, right? Hmm? Why don't I ride into Vallejo in the morning, kind of nose around, see what I can find out? I might come up with something. That's a good idea. Miss Warden, I'm terribly sorry we have to be away at this particular time, but can't be helped. Anyway, it's only two days. Meanwhile, you'll make yourself comfortable here, and Hop Sing will take good care of you. Very kind of you, Mr. Cartwright. And uh, by the time we get back, Candy should be back. We'll figure out what we'll do then. Have a pleasant journey. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
back, Handy. Good morning. Miss Warden. How did you find me? Hop Singh told me your bed hadn't been slept in and the buggy was gone. So I figured you were on your way to Vallejo. How oh, perceptive. What are these two for? I met them on the road and engaged them as guides. They couldn't guide a dog across the street. Charlie, Al, get back in your holes. Oh, come on, Candy. You men, stay right where you are. No easy pickings today. Get moving. Oh, see here, sir. You heard me. Move! Those men were quite competent and extremely courteous. And along around nightfall, they'd crack you over the head, very courteous, and pick you clean. And you are unmannerly and high-handed. No need to thank me, ma'am. I suppose you want me to turn back. Yeah. Under the circumstances, that's the only sensible thing to do. Fiddlesticks. Mrs. Warden, that town is dangerous. And there's nothing there worth looking at. We'll see. In any case, my mind is quite made up. Mrs. Warden, let me reason with you. You're going to barge into Vallejo, right? What do you intend to do? Tell him you want your jewelry back and expect him to roll over and play dead? I have a plan. You see, I found myself in a similar situation in Vazirabad about 18 months ago. I gave some bakshish to a Pathan mullah. <laughs> it worked wonders. I don't think I got more than about half of that. Vazirabad is a town in Afghanistan. Very wicked, I might add. Wicked. Mrs. Wharton, this town, whatever you call it, it don't hold a candle to Vallejo. Half the men in that town had killed their brothers for 50 cents cash or a dollar credit. We'll see. Bakshish is a bribe. It works anywhere. Maybe. Chances are your stuff's not even in Vallejo. It's scattered around, most likely. The only way to find out is to go there. I have a good mind to throw a rope around you and get it over with. I might remind you that I'm old enough to be your mother, and as such, I'm entitled to a certain freedom of decision. Huh? I figure I've done just about everything a reasonable man can do. I appreciate that. There's no need for you to involve yourself further. All right, all right, all right. Good day. Good day. <laughs> you have it on you? Uh, yes. How much? Slightly in excess of $5,000. You're a bigger fool than I thought. Sir. It's all right. I'm an even bigger one. I'm going with you. I was right. Vallejo's just past the next hill. Now, I want you to give me that money. Whatever for? Because I want to hide it under that rock. Unless you have an argument. No. The idea has merit. Turn your back. I don't know what the record is for bamboos on a lady, but you go into Vallejo with that much money, somebody's going to set a new one. Yeah. Mark this spot in your mind, just in case something happens to me. Marvelous, marvelous. 
Is it some sort of an occasion or holiday? Or just another day in the middle of the week. Well... Hey, hey, hey. Mrs. Wharton, you're going to stay here. I am not. Mrs. Wharton, I'm going to try to get your jewelry back, but I can't do a thing if you're going to worry me to death. So, as a favor, let me try by myself first. Please. Very well. I'll show you the high spots and the points of interest later. Don't go out of this room alone. On any account. Keep the door locked. I'll be back as quick as I can. Billy Buckman. Howdy. Sit down. Where's the girl? What girl? Everywhere I've been, all over town, people have been telling me Candy wants to see me. Real bad. Well, that's me. And I do. You ain't my idea, no Candy. I've seen you before. I bet you have. As a matter of fact, I did leave word here and there around town. I figured you were quite a devil with the ladies. I can't take credit for that. It's kind of a gift. <laughs> I got a proposition for you. A couple of days ago, some jewelry was stolen off the San Francisco stage for Virginia City. Is that a fact? I got a buyer for it. If I can uh, find out where to lay my hands on it. I don't know anything about that, mister. Well, that's too bad. Somebody had told me you might be able to help me. I'll pay $2,500. Cash? On delivery. Maybe. Maybe. Do we have a deal? Deal. Let's go. Hey. How long are you going to be in town? I'd uh, like to wrap it up before morning. Where can I find you? The hotel. I don't have that money on me. Not that I don't believe you. <laughs> Give me the name of the buyer. That'll do. Can't blame me for trying, can you? Stick to your gift, boy. You sure ain't a fighter. We still got a deal, don't we? Yeah. But now you've got two hours to scurry yourself around if you still want that money. Two hours.
I, I, I don't want to drink. You're standing there, ain't you? Well, yeah. Two bits. Uh, has there been an English lady in here? Uh, about middle-aged, kind of highfalutin and bossy? In here? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Supposing I was such a lady, and I kind of had a half-wit notion to bribe somebody, to buy some information on some stolen property, who would I go see? John Carmody, the druggist. Thanks. Why, yes. I spoke to Miss Wharton about an hour ago. Fine, woman. You don't see uh, strength of character like that much anymore. You go on, Mr. Carmody. Well, she uh, wanted my assistance in getting back some jewelry. I thought I could put her in contact with the right party, so I asked her to wait in the back room there. I got a hold of Ed Horn. They had a little conversation and uh, went off together a while ago. You sold her to him? <laughs> no. No. Well, I uh, did charge Ed a, a trifle for the information, but that's only fair and fitting. Where'd they go? Well, that's uh, hard to say. That's all the easier is going to get. Ed uh, runs with Billy Buckman and that bunch. We're a tolerant community. I sort of noticed. But they can get a little rambunctious and noisy for our taste. So they got a cabin out south of town. I don't guarantee it, but they might be there. That's to keep your mouth shut about talking to me, OK? Oh, it's a pleasure to do business with you, sir. I'll throw something else in. Won't cost you a nickel. Don't get caught with them after dark. Thanks. You all stick to fighting. You old sneaker at the door. What's the time I do? I guess I got a lot in my mind. You want to see our place? Go ahead. Got him thrashing around outside. What's he want? Looking for her. <laughs> well, he found her. Tie him up. Figured I'd find you here. I believe I owe you an apology. Yes, ma'am, I believe you do. Mr. Hall agreed to return my jewels for $5,000. I could have gotten them for half that. You wanted a thousand in advance. I went to get it, and they followed me. If I hold on to you. Yeah. Now they got the jewels and the money, and you. Yes. And me. Just once. Sometime will you do like you're told. I know. I can be willful. Rather difficult. Yes, ma'am. Unfortunately, at my age, I'm not at all likely to change. Besides, I'm usually right. Hey, lady. Let's just get back to business. Now, it's in a money belt. It stands to reason you got a lot more summers else. Now, you get my drift. You're holding me for ransom. I concluded that over an hour ago. Well, that's fine. Now, I expect you're going to give me some big hoop to do back to your mouth. 
There'll be no discussion of money until we talk about my jewels. We are going to talk about money. After you return my jewels. You want me to have Billy Boy here uh, carve off one of your ears? Well, if I were younger, the prospect of disfigurement might carry some weight. Well, now, it hurts considerable. A gentleman in the Sudan who had had first-hand experience told me the pain is vastly exaggerated. Go ahead. Have you considered the possibility of shock? I might not survive, and then you get nothing. It's her agent, all she might be right in. This man, he's your chieftain or leader, whatever you call it. Yeah. He's not overly intelligent, is he? Watch your tongue. You know, we can always toast his feet on the floor. It would have to be for your own enjoyment. He has no money. I'm not about to lose my jewels to save his feet. <laughs> I don't pay too much attention to her. Oh, all right. You can have the stuff back. Thank you. Now, about the money. I want my jewels physically here, in front of me. Sure. Fetch them. Money is in a bank in San Francisco. How can we get it to you? Well, you just... Send a telegram. Tell them you want that much put in the bank here in Vallejo, and then you just write us a note that says, hand it over. Oh, well, I didn't know you were capable of anything more complicated than waving a gun in somebody's face. Lady, you're beginning to get me mad. Well, you've been around her for a while. Are you satisfied now? They're all here. How much is the ransom? Uh, $25,000. Splendid. With that amount at your disposal, you'll probably debauch yourselves into early graves and the world will be rid of you. That's all worry. <laughs> I keep these. And he goes free as well. Oh, sure. I'll also want the freedom of this cabin. Well, anything you want. Mrs. Walton left in the middle of the night. I'm gone looking for her. Left, where'd she go? How do I know? Maybe Virginia City, huh? Well, this was written yesterday morning. They'd be back by now. You know, I'll give you odds she went to Vallejo. That's where her jewels are. She seems like the kind of woman to go after them. I wouldn't be too surprised. It was yesterday morning. Probably ran into trouble. All right, boys, let's saddle up again. Oh, boy. Went on spending a day as far away from the saddle as I could today. Yeah. Wharton. Any telegram I send 
requesting money has to include the code word, Absalom. I didn't include it. Thanks for telling me. Mr. Cartwright will come looking for us soon. Don't we don't count on him. Yes, we can. No. He's our only chance. No, no. Hey, no talking over there. We'll have to try to escape. Hey, that was my mirror. Oh, I'm very sorry. That's bad luck. I don't like it, no sir. Oh, it's not bad luck for us. Only for the one that busts the mirror. Are you sure? Yeah, that's the way it works. The breakfast is ready. Now come on and get it, or I'm going to throw it out. I bet you we'd be better off if you did. My old dumb got his whole life story packed on them fingernails. Uh. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Untying him so he can eat. I say let him swill it up like a dog. What are you doing? I have a plan. Don't you get no ideas now. With four of you here, I wouldn't think of it. $25,000. You write that note to the bank. Very well. What you gonna say, lady? Pay to the bearer on demand the sum of $25,000. Being placed on deposit at my order by the Golden Gate Bank of San Francisco. Signed, Mrs. Elizabeth H. Horton. Should I read it to you again? I can make it out. Come on, let's go get it. What are you doing? I'm going to wash the dishes. Oh, now, you just leave them dishes be right there. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to wash them. By myself, if I have to. Well, I ain't gonna help you, lady. Well, now, they can do with the good scrubbing. We ain't gonna be gone long. Gonna keep up that clattering until they're clean. You there at the table? I need more water. Well, go fetch it yourself. He ain't supposed to go outside the cabin. 
Boy, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's an uppity, bossity female. Guns out with your fingertips and drop them on the ground. All right, get out. Use your fingertips. Now, get into the house. Close the door and keep it closed. Mrs. Warden. I'm grateful for the thought behind what you did just now. You're welcome. But if I ever said anything good about you, I'd take it all back. If I was not bathed in luck, you could have shot me just as easy as them. You're a wild, reckless woman. Shoulder shot, leg shot. Luck had nothing to do with it. I am, by common agreement back home, the best wing shot in the county. Oh. They need tending to. After that, we'll get my jewels. Yes, ma'am. For me. Mrs. Wharton, there's no thanks due to us. We got here too late to help, unfortunately, but uh, Candy did all the helping. If ever you should come to Hertfordshire, Mr. Cartwright, do come and stay with me. <laughs> well, of course, thank you very much. I shall be home again in about a year. Special thanks to you, Candy. Anytime, Mrs. Wharton. 
Well, goodbye, Joseph. I sure wish you'd spend some time with us at the ranch. No, no. I'm going into the Dakotas. The Dakotas? Yes, I've long wanted to see some red Indians in their natural environment, particularly the Blackfeet or the Sioux. And I've met a gentleman who will guide me there. Well, okay. Goodbye, all. Goodbye, Mrs. Warden. Bye, Mrs. Warden. Hey, Paul. Don't you think we ought to try to stop them? There's no use. Them Indians are just going to have to look out for themselves. Come in this way. Yeah, this must be the tenth time that little heifer's run off. Well, I'll find her. Ah, uh, you going back and rest. I may get her and cook her for supper. Yeah, too little. Shock wagon sure gonna look good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. See ya. You know that brand. Drop your gun. Get off the horse. I'm sure we can solve it without using these. Chico, hey. Angelo. It would be a mistake to kill that man there. Woman, do not get in the way. You know the winter was hard. We need food, not a woman's foolish talk. I don't speak as a squaw. I've dreamed of the wolf, and the great prophet of the Paiute knows my name. We were sent to find the horses that graze these mountains. Two of us are on foot already. I left the herd a day's ride to the north, and I have spare horses. Those two are broken to the white man's taste, but they're yours if you'll have them. The last one isn't broken yet. But I'd like to trade him to you for that heifer. Well, ma'am, that's not a very good trade, but you got a deal. You know, are we near Cartwright land? You're on it, ma'am. I'm Horse Cartwright. Well, I've heard that the Cartwrights are honorable men and friends of the Paiute. I was on my way to your ranch to sell my horses. I did not know who you were. No oh, harm done. Would you trade more beef for the horses that they'll catch? Absolutely. Get them, send word to me at our roundup camp, and I'll meet you back here and we'll discuss the details. I am called Bear Hunter. You are welcome at our camp anytime.
I, I, uh, I wonder if you'd mind if, uh, if we'd rest here for a moment. My shoulder's gone a bit sore. No, no. How'd you uh, injure that shoulder, anyhow? Well, to tell you the truth, I got a bit careless trying to break that horse. I got myself thrown. It's just a cut, but uh, I think it might be trying to get infected. You know, we might ought to have a doctor take a look at that. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. I'm sure it's going to be all right. Well, it ain't going to hurt nothing. And the nearest one's in Virginia City. Well, I don't, uh, I don't think I could make it that far right now. We can't camp here, and that's for sure. It'll be freezing here in another hour or so. We can go on down to Low Country. I know a good place to camp down there. Well, I'll be grateful to you for the company, Mr. Cartwright. <sighs> Miss O'Donnell, my name is Hoss. Aaron. Here, you rest a spell. I'll go fill this candy, and then we'll be on our way. Fine. Shoulder bother you? A little. How hard that old pony throw you, anyhow? Well, not hard enough to break anything, but I don't think I'll be forgetting him for a while. Oh, <laughs> man, no. Listen, I'll fix something to eat. It ain't gonna be too tasty, but it'll be filling. I got some jerky and some beans back here. Well, wait, wait. Why don't I just try to catch us a dinner? Like what? Pheasant or quail or both. Well, that's fine with me, but I ain't seen nothing running or flying. Well, it never hurts to try. That's going to be interesting. Is there anything I can do to help? Just keep your fingers crossed. Oh. Hey. Oh. Let me take a look at that shoulder. <sighs> Boy. <sighs> that thing ain't infected. It's a sure trying. You know, maybe we shouldn't stop. Maybe we ought to keep going, huh? Well, I don't think my horse is up to it. I've been pushing him pretty hard. The fact is, I, I'm i not up to it. Yeah, well, you sure can't go out catching any game, that's for sure. Well, it doesn't take much muscle to set a snare. Huh. We're going to need a fire. Right. I'm aiming for Sue Stew. Sue Stew? What's that? Rabbit. Oh. Out of that jerky, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, this is the first coffee I've had since mine ran out last winter, and it smells like nectar. You said you wintered with the pilot. You lived with Indians all your life? Only the best part of it. Did the Sioux take you when you were a baby? Uh, no, no, I was, um, I was taken to the Sioux as a child by my father. Well, when my mother died, he had no idea how to go about raising a daughter. <laughs> So he raised me like a son. I took to it like a duck to water. I still do, I guess. Why did, uh, why did your pa take you to the Sioux? Well, he was looking for freedom. And when he discovered the Sioux, he thought he'd found it. It's funny, I never thought of freedom as being that hard to come by. My parents had to pay a price for it. You see, they were raised in Ireland under the British occupation. You were born in Ireland? No, I was born on a ship. They wanted the first land I'd see to be a free one. Well, then we came ashore at Massachusetts. And there was a sign in every window saying, no Irish need apply. So we headed west. How did you get with the pilot? And what's this thing about a prophecy or whatever it was? I've been talking too much. You're good company, Oz. I'll just take these down and clean. Here. Here. Oh. Oh. 
Hey, you got a fever. Come on, Aaron. Yeah. It's all right. You're gonna have to get some rest. Come on. It's really all right, Arthur. I just hope it's not too late. Let me fix this bed down for you. I'll get it. I'll get it. Just take it easy. Relax. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be fine. I really will be fine. All right? Yes, listen. Let me get you some cover. You don't have to I... keep that mad air off. There. That ought to keep the chill off. I promise you, if it is a fever, it'll be gone by the morning. I hope so. Thank you, Hart. You get some rest. You could you stand? The snow. We left them in the snow. Prophet's vision. Victory. Glory. Did he see this too? There's no sense. No humanity. Red man. White man. Red blood. White snow. You're gonna be all right. You hear? You're gonna be all right now. I'll, I'll get you to the doctor. Come on, Jeff Butcher. Boy, I'm not glad to see you, Paul. Her name's Erin O'Donnell. What is she, some kind of white Indian? What happened to her? She got bucked off by a horse. She's got an infected shoulder. It's bad. She's running a high fever. I guess she needs a doctor or a medicine man. Oh, shut up. Give me a hand. Got to get her to a doctor. How is she? I'm sure she's felt better. She sleep? You ever try to sleep through having a... Shoulder cauterized. She survived that. Now she's got to beat the fever. What do you think, Doc? We'll know by morning, one way or the other. I'll send my wife out to stay with her tonight. Someone should be with her. I'll go on up there right now. If she gets through this, she'll be laid up for a while. caused you a great deal of trouble. Oh, you know, don't be sorry about it. Don't be silly. The main thing is you get some rest and get to feeling better. I'd forgotten how good linen feels next to your skin. I wonder if you'd open the window just a little. Erin, it's, it's a fever that's making you feel uncomfortable. It's, it's, I don't think you need the draft. It's not the fever. It's just being closed in. The fact is, I just don't like being closed in. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with it this time. Oss, if you don't do it, I will. Hey, wait a minute. Settle down. I'll open the window. That, that settle it. Well, I must say, you've got a mind of your own, haven't you? Oscar, right. What an uncommon man you are. 
How have you managed to survive in this savage world? us for a month or so. Well, isn't that nice for you? Uh, sit down, ladies. Oh, thank you, Ben. Come on, Mary Beth. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Thank you ladies, like some coffee? Well, that'd be real nice, Hawk. Oh, uh, Ben, uh, I... Isn't Joseph here? No, no, he's with the Miranda. Oh, I'd so hope Mary Beth could meet both your sons. Ben. And he oh, says, uh... your other son's name is Little Joe. Well, I think that's just darling. Yeah, well, you'll meet him sometime. Right now, I got to talk over some business with Ben. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the roundup, is it? No, no, it's coming along fine. And uh, if we want it to stay that way, we've got to decide what we're going to do about those Paiutes. Paiutes are nowhere near here. Besides that, they're, you're just after some wild horses anyhow. They'll come back. They've had a taste of good beef, and they'll come back for more. Unless we let them know that they're not wanted. Clint, you're making a mountain out of a mole here. We haven't had any Indian trouble here for a long time. That's what my brother thought until he and his family were wiped out at Brinker's Ford. Oh, Aaron. Miss O'Donnell, this is Mr. and Mrs. Murray and their niece, Miss Johnson. I do. It's a pleasure, I'm sure. How'd you do? I think we better talk privately. Come on. Come on, have a seat. Well, that's a nice little dress. You make it yourself, my dear? No, I, um... Uh... Never mind. A few little alterations here and there, and it'll do nicely. Well, I'm afraid I don't know how to sew. You should be grateful to the Cartwrights for giving you a chance to return to civilization. Well, I am very grateful to the Cartwrights. But I came here from as old a civilization as your own. And an honorable one. I uh, suppose those shoes are... comfortable. Oh, yes, very, very. Is it true you all have to... Chew the leather soft to make them comfy? Sometimes. As it happens, these were a gift from my uncle. Your uncle? Yes, Bull Buffalo. He was a Sioux medicine man. Oh. It must be very difficult for a white girl to uh, protect herself among people who buy and sell women like animals. Miss Murray. No, it's not hard. When young men brought strings of war ponies as a bride price, my father had only to turn them down politely. My father never had to depend for an income on how many horses he could trade for me. How fortunate for your father. <laughs> Come along, Mary Beth. Yes, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Clinton, I would like to go home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hoss, I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. For her. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I saw the way Hoss looked at her. She's got him wrapped right around her little finger. She wouldn't mind marrying one of the Cartwrights, that's for a fact. You probably don't mind having a bunch of Indians hanging around your place, but it sure makes it hard on my family. Well, I'm real sorry, Mr. Murray. But if Hoss wants it that way, that's exactly the way it's going to be. Well, I'm glad you can laugh. You weren't upset by them. Oh. Paul, she can take care of herself. Don't you worry about that. Oh. Darling people my father would have called the Murrays. They're the kind that would have enjoyed the Sandy Wash massacre. Yeah. Indian women and children shot, bodies left in the snow. What a needless tragedy that was. I turned and left the Dakotas. I ran like a thief. I'd best go up and rest. Well, you must be tired. Yeah. We'll call you for dinner. Oh, thanks again for the dress. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry I forgot about the shoes. I like these shoes. But Murray won't be so secret. Oh, you know Murray. Yeah. Sees Paiutes under every rock. No, no. He just saw the whole Paiute nation riding over the hill and pulled war paint. There was Bear Hunter and a couple of other braves now. I know, I know, but he thinks she's going to bring a whole lot more around. Well, Aaron was raised with the Sioux and wintered with the Pipe, so it's understandable that a few of them may come around to say hello or something, but Murray can't really believe that they're going to put together a war party, can he? Oh, yes, yes, he believes that. And he thinks that they're going to steal all our beef. And he just can't forget what happened at Brinkus Ford when he lost part of his family. And that's only half my concern. The other half is Aaron. She's all right, Paul. But for whatever reason, she ran away from the Dakotas. She left the Piutes. And now the first time she meets anybody outside our family, she runs into hatred and prejudice. You think, you, you think she might try to run away again, huh? Well, once you start running, it gets easier every time. I'll tell you this. She tries. I'll do everything I can to keep her from it. I'm not surprised. Hoss, don't you be surprised if you wind up being hurt. Paul, I know you're concerned, but you needn't be. I know how I feel, and I know what I want. And what's troubling you? Well, it's not what Murray and them like him think of her, but it's what she thinks of us that concerns me. Hey, this Aaron. Looked at a lot of horse flesh, but that little pony of yours is one of the prettiest ones I ever saw. That is the best horse that I ever stole. Stole? Well, I stole his mother when she was in foal with him from a crow's camp. That's when the Sioux gave me the cool feathers that you saw, as a sign that I had medicine. Speaking of medicine, you never did tell me about that prophecy. What was that all about? The Paiute prophet said that I was the wolf's child, born to fight and die for the Indians. Do you believe that? When I was with the Sioux, I did. But now I'm not so sure. What are you sure of? I'm sure of one thing. I'm tired of being a curiosity. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure you do. When I look at you, I see a man with wisdom, of great strength, who prefers to be gentle.
concentrate on moving straight ahead. Instead of up and down, you'll get where you want to go faster. Oh, that's funny. That's very funny. That may not be the meanest jughead I've ever seen, but he'll do. Well, maybe you haven't appealed to his better nature. Oh, is that what you did? Just before he threw you? You made your point. But it did give me time to consider my mistake. I think I got his number now. Oh, would you mind letting me in on it before he kills me? Well, you might be able to talk me into it. My father got along with the Sioux very well. Probably because he never tried to change them. Hmm. Well, what did you folks do when the Sioux were moved to the reservation? Well, my father had died by then, and I, uh, I started horse hunting. Hmm. There's something you got a right to know. I was arrested by the army after the Brinker's Fort raid. They put you in jail? Oh, no. Into a hospital storeroom. Manacle to a cot. No windows. No light. No air. And what charge? I never did know exactly. I never saw a courtroom or a jury or a judge or the officer who ordered it. I think it had something to do with the prophecy. Well, they had no legal right. I was in no position to argue the point, Mr. Cartwright. Excuse me, please. I'm going to look in on Jughead. It ain't hard to figure out why she don't like being cooped up, is it? She hardly touched a dinner. I reckon she can't get her mind off of the little hungry youngins in the Piute camp. Yeah. Although it's spring, there should be plenty of game for food. Oh, yeah, small game. That ain't a, enough to feed a tribe, no, just rabbits. Well, if, if we're that short of food in the mountains, we may be in for some serious trouble. Well, we're that short. Of course, they got the cattle that they'll get from the horse trade, but that ain't enough either. <sighs> Wish you could feed them all. Yeah. Well, I think I'll go ahead and see how she's doing with that gray jug he had. Well, the gray that you traded you for the habit? Yeah. You better stay away from him. Candy says he'll chew your arm off. Let's go out and see if she's all right. You figuring on taking a little night ride? No, I'm just getting acquainted. I've been working with him a little every day. Is music a part of your system of getting acquainted? I mean, you were whistling. Oh, I guess it is. Sort of a catchy little tune. Is it Irish? I. When I was a child, we'd sit by our fire in the evenings, and my father used to sing all the old songs. And the rolling hills of Ireland would spring up before my eyes. That's uh, downright poetic. You should have heard my father. He was a teacher and a proper poet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I've i always had a real tough time with words. It's, as a matter of fact, I'm having a heck of a time right now. There's something I need to tell you. Pause. And it's well, what I'd like to say is... Pause. Don't be confused by a pretty spring day. Oh, I, I ain't confused. I, I hope you're not. Even in a dress, I don't fit in your world. Aaron, let me tell you something. You ain't exactly the best judge in the world of how a man feels, and particularly this one. I think you're as pretty as a picture in that dress. And you will fit in my world just fine. 
I don't know, Hoss. I just don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm like Nightwind. I've always run free. I mean, he, he's never even been in a stall before, nor on a picket line. Aaron. I mean, not even at night. All I'd ever have to do was wake up and turn, and he'd be there. Aaron. Even when it was so dark, I could hardly see him. I think that's why I called him night. Aaron, please. There's something I gotta tell you, and, and you gotta listen to me. I want to protect you. And I want to look after you. And I want to make sure that nothing ever happens to you again, like happened up in the Dakotas. I want to. I want to be near you and with you. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Hoss, I was looking for your paw, but as long as you're here, I'll talk to you. And no apology for interrupting. What do you want, Mr. Murray? I just saw a stinking Paiute skulking around the Roundup camp, Hoss. I'm not going to put up with that kind of talk, Mr. Murray. I invited that Indian here. We're going to trade him some beef for some horses. You're a fool, Hoss. My best advice, I think, to you is to go on home. Well, maybe, uh, maybe this will interest you. Wired a friend of mine in the cavalry up the Dakotas about this O'Donnell woman. My well, man, she's, she's an insurrectionist. She's a traitor. She, she's worse than a squaw. Aaron. Take me a couple of days to cut my stock out of the herd. Just make sure that he keeps his pet Indians away from camp until then. Go on, get out of here. Still got some of that good French champagne. I, I think a celebration's in order, huh? Yeah, sure. Sure is. Don't worry about Murray. He's just an unpleasant man. Unpleasant? That's a mild word for it. What makes him hate me? It's irrational. It's, it's become a disease with him. Are you afraid of him, Aaron? Yes. I guess I am. Well, you don't have to be from now on out. The world is full of Murrays. All my life, each time I've met him, each place, I've been scared of all of them. Well, that was before. Yeah. Come on, let's get the champagne. If you don't mind, I'll be along in just a minute. Anything you say?
they did not know. One more reason why you should leave them. And you are not like they are. My father was once. I can learn. To live within walls, behind locked doors, where you cannot feel and smell the change of the wind, you would wither and choke on bitterness. I am not an Indian. You are more Indian than you are white. The men who were just here, they know that. And they hate you for it. He wants to kill you for helping the Paiute. He would have to kill my husband first. You have no husband. You must have heard what Hoss Cartwright said to his father. I heard. But I did not hear you. Then hear me now. He is to be my husband. Do not forget the prophecy. you do that. Well, the secret is that when you talk to him, you got to know what to say. Hey, how's the shoulder? You ready to go for that ride? <laughs> ride? Yes, ride. After two weeks indoors, I'm raring to go. Well, good, let's go. Come on. Well, we'll deliver the cattle tomorrow. There's a big box canyon back up north of here. I'll put them in there so they won't get mixed up with your horses. She will be your, your woman? Yeah. My wife. It is hard to think she will leave my people. Well, she won't ever be any farther away than she has been the last couple of weeks. Very far away. A strange land to her does not belong there. She can belong there. No. Your people hate her. We believe she has been touched by the spirits. She told me all about the prophecy, but maybe if she's married to a white man, it will come true. It will find her. Until then, I wonder if she would be happier with those who dishonor her or with those who love her. I love her, Bear Hunter. Open 
that dime to get the cattle together out of that herd. Got right. right. We got big trouble. It's Murray. He told his crew he was going to take uh, some picked men go pay the Paiutes a visit. He knows where that camp is, boy. I better get out there. Well, uh, Candy, you and I will ride out to Murray's place. If he's not there, we'll meet you at the camp. All right. I'll get my things. I'll get your horse. Garrett, maybe you better stay here. The Paiute wouldn't be there, Hoss, for me. Count four. Four men, four rifles, and bullets to waste. Until you came, we were three. Only two rifles. Now we are five, and we have four rifles. We'll have two more pretty soon, Paul and Candy. If they are not here soon, they may find only bodies. Yeah, I know what you mean. If they got one man up on that high country up there, they'd have us right in their sights, wouldn't they? They will get one there. On the other hand, if one of us got up there, we'd have them in the same position, wouldn't we? I'm going to try for that ring. Us! Us! Us, they'll kill you. That's what they're trying to do now. You stay here. Us! care for him, Baron. I could have written for help. He would not let you do that. I think he fears the prophecy. I think you also fear it. That's why you left the Sioux and the Paiute, because no, of it. No, I do not fear it. The prophecy was an old man's muttering. It has no more meaning than the wind. Dr. Ney. I'm going to divert their fire. Squaw gonna tell me what to do. Murray! Got it!
He wants my weapons to be buried with me. Well, he, he's going to have to wait a long time, because you're going to be all right. You hear? Don't waste precious time. Oh. Oh. I'm going to take you back home. You hear? I can't, I can't go back there without you. I, I can't go back alone. She's gonna run off and leave me. Now I wish to God she had. 